Got up today, looked out the window, and my neighbor left me another present sitting out on the street. This uh, RCA little stereo dealio here. Cheap Chinese made crap, but she tossed it out. She tossed out a 27 inch Emerson uh, CRT that I made a video on about a year ago, I guess. She tossed that out and it worked. It still works. I actually gave it to my grandmother so she could have a bigger TV. So, uh, got it plugged in here. Standby light is on. Relay clicks. And it says there's no disc. Let's hit eject. Okay, I hit eject and it went to the tuner. So there's obviously some logic issues. Eject again, and there's a disc in it. James Taylor's greatest hits. Of course, we can't play any of it because we'll probably get on. Oh yeah, finicky. Now it thinks it's on USB for a source. Let's see. Dude. No disc. Nothing in disc three. Nothing in four. No disc. Eject. No disc. So CD issues. Is that why she tossed it? disc. See I hit eject and it went to tuner so there's definitely some issues. <laughs> it's got a bass boost feature. This is supposed to control the dimmer I guess for the screen. Instead when you hit that it like does weirdness. It's cheap Chinese crap but I think it probably needs to be clean. It's pretty dusty. Of course, everything down here gets dusty. There's no way to fight it. It's got a USB port. It says you can record, I guess, from CDs to a uh, USB stick. That's broken around there. The hinge is broken. So it probably just needs to be cleaned. Uh, it has the remote sensor, but she didn't leave the remote out for it nowhere. Uh, she also left a uh, VCR, crappy, uh, it's one of the last VCRs, the uh, Sylvania or whatever. We'll take, probably take a look at it in another video. So it'll do MP3 via uh, USB. I'm assuming you could probably plug a damn hard drive full of MP3s in there and it would work. Um, it may do MP3 via MP3 CD because it also says it'll do WMA. And it is CDR RW compatible. It's the uh, headphones, and I guess that's uh, input for whatever you want to input. Game MP3. Let's find a uh, talk radio station. Something we're going to get copyright flagged for. Support all this, okay? Yeah. Because I make a good salary. I'm a uh, computer consultant. Yeah. And I make a good salary. Well, but, that's um, good. You know, that's good. Like that's a, good. <clears throat> that salary's been going to pay off the IRS. Well, buddy, I'm glad you're making good money as a computer consultant because I can't get a job at computers down here because there are none. 
certifications or not, you're not getting a job around here because there are not any computer jobs. Anyways. So, uh, yeah, decent speakers. This is a fake tweeter. It doesn't actually do anything. That's your tweeter right there, which is an actual real speaker. I, I have to make an assumption that at some reasonable rate of interest. This is wired weird. It's got uh, two sets of wires. So this is wired separately from the sub, I guess, on the back. So there's two sets of inputs for each speaker. Pretty strange. So I guess I'm going to pull it apart and see how much dirt so that's probably why the CD player won't work it's probably just full of dirt Nothing, not a toasty CD drive. Doesn't want to go back to disc one or disc five or disc four, but it will go to three. Eject. Uh oh, now we're not going to open it all. I think this thing probably needs a laser cleaning and the belt's probably to be clean. Probably just dirty. No disc. Well, let's put you in number two. The disc is pretty scratched, but it's not too bad. Disc three, huh? Here it's cycling the trays. No disc. All right, well, we'll pull it apart and clean it up, see what it does. If not, the radio works, and it'll be one hell of a fancy radio. 300 watts, 300 watts my ass, mm. it's probably more like about maybe 20 or 50 watts if that, alright let me go find my screwdriver, so here's the uh, inside, got the little panels you just slot them off, it's a pretty big transformer, maybe it is a uh, semi close to 300 watts if that's a big ass transformer. Got a fan back here, a big heat sink to cool our amplifier IC. Got big ass diodes, big capacitors. They all look okay. Bunch of damn fuses. Are there five fuses in this board? Yep. But, still can't get to the freaking CD player, which is down here. You can't get into it, so I'm gonna have to. There's another panel here I could take off. Maybe that'll get me into the CD player. And of course, the CD is sitting in the player. I don't see it sitting up in the tray. And then I need to see if I can get at these controls back here. Maybe clean them. Unless there's a lot of that logic to it right there. I bet that chip controls all of the focus. I bet that chip controls all the logic for a uh, the front controls and everything. I bet it's going bad, probably. Anyway, let me see if I can get into this down. Alright, we got our little back panel off. I guess you can see. Hey, look, there's a CD in there. What the hell? <laughs> can I even reach in the other side and get it out of there? So I can get it out this way. Somebody's pirated copy of Hotel California. Scratch all the shit. Look at that. Maybe that's why it's on art. Still can't actually see the pickup. Well, 
There it is, right there. Still gonna be a bitch and a half to get to. Come on, it just needs to be clean. I guarantee that's all that's wrong. Right? But they have to make things difficult, don't they? Take that screw out and that screw out. And this might just pick up. I don't know. These were never made to be serviced. They are made to be used and then thrown in the trash. Finally, with a crap load of screws and disconnecting everything. There's the amplifier section. The power supply. A bunch of more over here to take this this uh, daughter board out. Pretty sure this is the entire brains of the operation because I believe that's your uh, oh, what kind of chip is that? Let's see, telechips. Of course, it would have a focus the camera on it, wouldn't it? Yeah, telechips. That's probably the brain. That looks like RAM or some kind of RAM. And this SST over here is a uh, looks like a, what do they call it a TSOP. Uh, it's probably ROM or something to control all of it. So if I had to guess, that's the CPU. That's whatever the software is stored on. Is it this chip? And then this is your work RAM for storing MP3 or whatever MP3s, station memory, stuff like that. Anyway, that's not what we're concerned about. What we're concerned about is getting to this CD player. And now that I got all that out of the way, we should be able to get in here and get to it. That CD was laying up here on top of the drive mechanism. So, pretty cray cray. Alright, there's our optic pickup. Gonna put a tad drop of Windex on here. Not much. Back when I was a wee noob doing this type of stuff, I soaked a Q-tip in Windex and I put it on a laser. And guess what happened to all the Windex? It ran out of the laser. And weren't the laser. We don't want to do that. It might be a little bit dusty, but not too bad. it was that bad in a little bit probably wouldn't hurt to take some of my I wish I had a regular lithium grease and not the spray shit but I'm thinking it wouldn't hurt to take and spray a little bit of lithium grease on a q-tip and lubricate the uh, slide shaft here so I shall do that Alright, a little bit of lithium spray grease on here. I really need to go get the real deal, but put a little bit on here. Put a little bit up there. Put a little bit on this gear here. Slide this pickup back and forth if it's slide. what's on it wasn't nasty well it's definitely motor driven there's the uh, pickup adjustment there a little red screw if you wanted to turn the optics up more Is there a way to test this thing without completely reassembling it and putting it back in the case? Ugh. Well, I think this one works in 
pull a tray in, drop a disc, see if there's a disc. If there's not a disc, it'll pick the tray up, put it back out, and back and forth, back and forth until it's checked them all. So, uh, a lot of the carousel ones have a have a little infrared light that counts the revolutions and all that to figure out where discs are and stuff. Now, yeah, let me see if I can get it somewhat back together. And yeah, it does have one of those little infrared pickups that's right here. It's on top of the uh, magnet that holds the disc down. That's what this little guy right here is. Tells where the tray comes in and out. And somebody just dropped something downstairs. Guess I better go check on that. Anyways, now while I'm at it, since I got this board out, why companies do this, I don't know, but you got this hot snot right here, and I've got it across every one of these connectors. And that crap, and supposedly the newer stuff isn't supposed to be as bad, but in the old stuff, it will turn brown, and when it does, it will cause shorts or cross talk. So, I don't know how old this unit is, because I don't see a build date on it, but I'm going to pull that crap off of these connectors. Maybe that'll help why the function buttons aren't working correctly sometimes. Alright, we got it back together. Just enough to see if this drive is going to work or not. Well, that's working a little bit better. Let's see. One. Cycles from where it left off. All right, did it see the disc? Reading. Hey, look, twelve tracks. Play. And there we go. Okay, so stop, eject. Well, let's move you down to like the bottom down here somewhere. Sock through the trees. I think that fixed it, at least for that part anyway. So another thing to be aware of is uh, the pickup that I cleaned, or the, the, the infrared sensor that I cleaned on the top up here. Oh, I'm trying to get it. Oh, I need my screwdriver, maybe that'll help. So there's a sensor here right there which I cleaned and then its pickup is right here on the bottom that little LED photo cell so that shines into that and as these trays out here move through and out it knows to log where there's a disc and where there's not a disc so not only did you clean the optical pickup for the CD player but also clean the photo cells clean those photo cells in there so that it can detect what disc is where and I see our little fans running in there, keeping the amplifier cool. So I guess now I'll just throw it back together, huh? I didn't clean any of that out yet. It's just going to be a pain in the ass to pull all that out. But I did pull all that hot snot off that other board. Hot snot everywhere. So let me put a hook of speaker up. Let's see if it works. Alright. Let's see if we can uh, get this thing to play. I've been dicking around with these EQ buttons. I think they failed. Let's see, sometimes it'll say program when it shouldn't. Sometimes you'll push this button and it'll do this or it'll do that. It'll do weird crap. I don't know if it's from lack of use or they're dirty or if the control IC is going stupid. See, that time it thought I pushed program when a program was not what I pushed. So,
Anyway, what we came here for, see if the CD play works. Play. Sounds like it plays. Can't play more than a second because I get owned. So anyway, I'll say that took care of the CD playing problems. So really, the only problem left now is the button issues, and I don't know if I want to fix it. I have to pull that whole circuit board out, get some contact spray out, and clean it. And then if that's not the problem, then it's in the logic chip that drives this whole board, including this. Uh, vacuum, well I guess it's a vacuum or fluorescent interface or screen. Anyways, I think that's going to conclude this video. Just proves that some trash can be fixed. She thought it was trash, so.